Phrase structure rules. In this video, we're going to be looking at phrase structures. So phrase structures are basically tree structures as we have here, and then phrase structure rules are the rules that we as speakers use to derive those structures. So the idea is that when we look at sentences, they are ordered linearly, obviously, but underlyingly, they're also ordered hierarchically. That's how we envision them in our minds. And we represent that hierarchical structure with trees. Then we also want to come up with phrase structure rules that can derive those trees. So we're trying to model the mental grammar that speakers have for creating trees. Now trees themselves, the way that we envision these is like a family tree, except for it's parthenogenic. It, it doesn't have any males in it. So we talk about mothers and daughters. So for example, if we begin at the very top, we have our sentence here, and then it has two daughters, this NP here and this VP here, which means that the NP and the VP are sisters. And they're also mothers of their own nodes. So for example, the NP has as its daughter that N, and the VP has as its daughters this adverb and verb phrase. Okay, so keep the, that terminology in mind that we're gonna be talking about mothers, daughters, and sisters. All right, the first phrase structure rules we're gonna be looking at are for nouns. And the idea is that when you see something on the left, so for example, this one here, this rule, that takes us from a noun and has a noun and a preposition phrase, the idea is that whatever is on the left of the arrow is the mother. Whatever is on the right of it is the daughter or daughters. So in other words, we're saying that we take this noun and then it will have two daughters, a noun and a preposition phrase. And we see that represented in this tree here. Now, notice there's gotta be some other rules, like for example, what a preposition phrase is and, and a noun phrase. But for now, we're just focusing on the nouns as mothers. We also see that a noun can have as its daughters an adjective and a noun, as we see here. And then our first rule that we see here, this is a lexical entry rule. The idea here is that this is shorthand for a whole bunch of rules. Those curly brackets are basically the entirety of the nouns in the lexicon of English. So the dot, dot, dot represents an enormous number of other nouns. So the idea is that that's gonna be the whole set of nouns. And of course, then what you get is this tree here where we have a noun, and then as its daughter, you actually have a lexical entry a word. Now we can look at noun phrase, and our noun phrase consists of a determiner and a noun. So it's always these noun phrases, verb phrases, preposition phrases will always have a head. The head is whatever the phrase is named for. So its daughter is the noun daughter of a noun phrase is the head of that noun phrase. Okay, now as we saw in the previous slide, nouns can combine with adjectives to form a noun or nouns can combine with preposition phrases to form a noun. So we can get a lot more complexity in this. The, phra the phrase structure that we've got here is sort of the simplest phrase structure for a noun phrase. We also have verb phrase, so any of our intransitive verbs, like daydream or sit or smile, these are verbs that don't need anything to combine with them. They don't need an object. They don't need anything else to complement them. They are complete in and of themselves. 
they act as verb phrases by themselves. Those are intransitive verbs. And so we say that there, the mother is the verb phrase, and then the lexical item is its daughter. You can also get a verb phrase consisting of a TV, transitive verb, plus a noun phrase. And that's what we get in this one here. So there you've got a transitive verb plus its noun phrase, object. We can also get a ditransitive verb. Ditransitive verbs have two objects, two noun phrase objects, like give my dog a walk. You can also have a sentential verb. That's this rule here, SV. And these are verbs that take as their object an entire sentence, like I said I walked my dog. Then we also can get a verb phrase combining with a preposition phrase to create another verb phrase. So that's what we see in this one here. And the idea with this sort of structure is that the preposition phrase creates a new verb phrase out of an already existing verb phrase. So any verb phrase can fit under that verb phrase. It's a way of just modifying an already existing verb phrase. This sort of modifier, the preposition phrase here modifying that verb phrase, is what we call an adjunct. Whereas the noun phrase that comes after a transitive verb, we call a complement. And then we also get a similar one in this bottom one with adverbs. Adverbs also act as adjuncts with verb phrases, so they combine with a verb phrase to create another verb phrase, as we see in this structure here. We've got preposition phrases. We've already seen this a little bit. So a preposition phrase is just simply a preposition plus a noun phrase. Now, this is kind of interesting in a sense because we also know that noun phrases can embed preposition phrases inside of them, which we'll talk about later when we talk about recursion. Then finally, we've got sentences. So a sentence can a sentence, the simplest sentence, consists of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Notice also that as we talked about, verb phrases with sentential verbs have sentences embedded inside of them, which also leads to recursion. So let me explain a little bit about recursion now. And I think the best way to think of this is a story from Bertrand Russell. This is probably apocryphal, but it's a good story. The story goes that Bertrand Russell gave this lecture. He was a very famous philosopher of the 20th century. So he gives a lecture and then he opens it up at the end to a Q&A. And this older woman in the back row raises her hand and says, well, professor, that was all very interesting, but do you know what the earth rests on? And Russell decided he would kind of humor her. And he smiled and said, no, I don't. And she says, it's a turtle. And he goes, oh, well, that's interesting. But if the earth rests on a turtle, what does the turtle rest on? And she answers, oh, you can't fool me. It's turtles all the way down. So that turtles all the way down idea, which we can represent like this, is a perfect example of recursivity. So imagine that we've got the sentence, the earth sits on a turtle, 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 ad infinitum. Our grammar allows for that. In other words, our grammar allows for infinitely long sentences. Now, obviously, we could never utter an infinitely long sentence for a very simple reason, time. You know, eventually we will die and then the sentence will end. But in theory, our grammar allows for infinity. And that's a really important aspect of human language. It seems to be a defining feature 
of human language. And I'm going to end this talk with a cartoon that I'm very fond of, where this man is talking to his therapist and says, I have this recurring dream that I'm lying here telling you about a recurring dream about lying here telling you about a recurring dream about dot dot dot.